Hey, I want to do a quick video on our latest install. It's a SG06. Um, and it arrived a couple of days ago. Uh, we, we started out uh, the first day removing the old boiler, which was an independence from uh, the 1990s. Um, which uh, anything made before 2000 in the independence line seemed to last a long time. And it did, but uh, it eventually failed and so it was removed. So we've got it up on blocks as is the usual practice. Uh, the return line, I'm starting to use a stainless steel nipple there because that's uh, pretty aggressive uh, going into there. And when they do leak, it's a pain in the ass to pick it out. So uh, the stainless seemed to, to last longer. Uh, perhaps it's more expensive. Um, but really not that much more expensive than, say, extra heavy, which is harder to find. Um, this is where we're feeding into the uh, boiler in the return line there, the equalizer return line. And uh, we've got a brass bushing to transition there. And on either side, we have stainless to um, because we're going to have possibly aggressive water there. We're going to reduce the corrosion. That's one of the last of our extra heavy nipples. And then we, we transition to regular. Um, and the shorter nipples here, this is the Harford Loop. It's a little bit, uh, you probably could have gotten away with one inch going into this inch and a half T, which is the minimum called for, the minimum equalizer called for by the uh, manufacturer. Uh, the standard practice probably could have been uh, one inch but there it is but if that fitting excuse me that uh, nipple there is uh, stainless steel um, likewise with the shorter ones there this is the uh, the drip from the, the two dry returns and that is the VXT um, you may have seen it in an earlier video PEX goes into a uh, uh, iron uh, iron pipe thread size uh, shutoff, backflow preventer, and a service valve there, which is a three eighths male by female. I've reversed the flow of the VXT uh, so that it fits tighter in to the package there. And there's our manual bypass. So this is the existing or this is the existing um, equalizer line and T made some modifications there it's three inch um, and again there's your Harford loop uh, excuse me this is the dry this is the dry return drip which turns into a very short section of wet return wet return is any piping that is below the water line the water line is right about where my hand is here, and so all of this pipe is full of water, or should be. And there's the drain for the uh, drips, dry, uh, the wet return. There is the relief valve, as usual, 15 pound. Let's see if that focuses. It's not focusing today. There we go, a little better. Um, 15 pound relief. Come, this is the relief that comes with the boiler. We install it with a T, which is plugged, so that it can be inspected and cleaned as it fills with dirt every once in a while. And we repurpose the drip um, so that the discharge is safely directed should it that so happen. Purpose of the drip there. Manufacturer for the SG06 uh, is the minimum uh, the size you you need the extra. Uh, outlet if it's five and under you can get away with one two and a half inch but when you transition to the six the manufacturer calls out for two both risers to be used and they're two and a half inch um, and then you're supposed to go into a three inch header so this is not extraordinary piping um, it's that's what the manufacturer calls for about the only thing we do is that we add uh, an extra a uh, nipple on each end and a short, excuse me, an extra uh, 90 and a short nipple to make it a, a 
drop header and that helps uh, assembly and uh, dries out the steam. This is the existing supply and this is an example of a piping that is for uh, the old coal-fired unit. The three inches huge, has a huge amount of air and we also know it's coal because we have this uh, pulley there which was designed for the pressure control and dampering mechanism when this was coal fired. Um, so this loops all the way around and let's see starts there loops all the way around and because it has a yeah, it's not focusing there we are still blurry sorry about that um, we have this uh, Gorton menorah to uh, vent the air as quickly as possible and this is then the driver turns and goes back to there go back and there is a another smaller loop that comes around and has its own tiny uh, only just needs one Gordon and the idea is that the steam should arrive here and here at about the same time despite the disparate amounts of air that have to be vented well that's the theory anyway uh, ready. So where, where are we? Ah, yes. So this is where the burner's going to go. Uh, this can burn oil or gas, depending on the type of burner. Um, we have our usual um, scenario here. Uh, we've got this is the uh, low water cutoff, 120 volt sight glass tappings, and this is how we install the drain on the sight glass that is a quarter street 90 uh, of that type because it has to clear the door and it's a little tight there that's for sure now then we got to use a hose uh, for the drainage we, re we of course add our full port ball valve there rather than the piece of junk uh, drain that they uh, comes with the boiler we use a 270 pigtail the less likely to clog uh, the customer got a um, vapor stat because if the pressure gets too uh, high, the well, water will tend to back up into the driver turns. Um, this is the 30 pound gauge that's got to be there, totally useless. The customer has installed a 5 pound gauge uh, on the old boiler and uh, we transferred it to this one. And this actually tells you what the real pressure that the system operates at. There's the schematic, general on blocks. Uh, the usual situation, um, <laughs> well, McLean decides not to ship half their stuff, so they, they didn't ship the uh, hardware. So we gotta kind of slow um, behind on mounting the burner. We gotta be able to mount the burner to run the gas line. Uh, it's much easier, so we got our fittings there ready to uh, go in. This is the uh, Carlin um, orifice. It says 5 16 There it is there. I, we think that's a little large, so we're probably going to get one and drill it out ourselves to about a quarter. There's a label that we've got to install once we um, wire this in and we know where our uh, switch is, uh, so we don't want to put this uh, where it might be covered up by the uh, junction box. This is the uh, valve that comes with the uh, Carlin burner. And I, ah, okay, this is the flue that comes off. There is the barometric, which you need to use with gas, which um, code calls for a double swing. Um, so that goes in like that when the unit is uh, drafting got an 8 inch barometric on a 7 inch because this was designed to this chimney was designed to pull uh, drafting through a pile of burning rocks so the draft can get very fierce so we need good valve authority or draft authority uh, when this operates to ensure a stable uh, draft we decouple the chimney 
we decouple the chimney from uh, what's going on inside the burner chamber. If that makes any sense. So, um, code also requires a blocked flu switch sensor, which if this uh, the chimney gets blocked, this will swing out and bathe the sensor in hot air, which will then be hooked up to the uh, 24 volt system and shut this, the uh, burner down. So I believe that covers everything. Our usual, let's get a shot of a sort of general situation there. Going on for a very long time. Uh, I trust this was useful. Oh, let me get a shot here. There's the uh, Carlin burner, gas burner, easy gas burner. What we're probably going to do is switch over from that um, outlet to the nine band, which we uh, it's, it's de definitely quieter. And so uh, we've got a few things we got to do to that before we get this thing uh, fired off and uh, start the process. There's all the uh, literature being assembled um, for consultation later. Well, I think that uh, about covers it. Um, thank you again, and if you have any questions, uh, please leave them below. Like and subscribe, and thank you for your support. Stay safe. Happy steaming.